Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about The Finder Chronicles by Suzanne Palmer, especially book three, The Scavenger Door, which just released this past Tuesday, August 17th. I actually got an advanced reader copy from NetGalley, so I read it as an ebook ahead of the release, and I wanna do a little bit of a review of that, but I also kind of wanna treat this video as more of a should you read the series video so you can see if you're interested the whole thing is going to be, I'm basically going to make this spoiler free. It will certainly be as spoiler free as what you would get from reading the synopses of the books. I just feel like there's not that much point to doing a dedicated review of book three in a series that I don't know how many of you have read. I know I've mentioned this series a few times on the channel, but I've never, I've never done a dedicated video for it. So I thought I'll just, I'll talk about the series as a whole and what it's like, and then I'll also do a little bit of a review of book three. By the way, I'm pretty sure that book three is intended to be the end of the series, which I had seen it referred to as a trilogy before, but I was never I was never 100% certain if this was going to be a long-running thing or if it was going to wrap up in a trilogy. So it does feel like it has wrapped up for now and it is complete as a trilogy. So if any of you out there only read completed series, I don't understand you, but you can read this now. In terms of genre, I'd call this series more like science fiction action adventure. It follows Fergus Ferguson, the main character. He is a finder, which is basically an intergalactic repo man. His job is to find and hopefully return things that others have not been able to locate. So in each book of the series, Fergus is trying to find something, but it's never really a straightforward job like maybe you would think. The first book is the closest to that because he is trying to find and return a artificial intelligence ship that has been made by his friends, the shipmakers of Pluto, and it has been, the ship has been stolen and he wants to find and return the ship. But of course, instead he gets sucked into a whole bunch of local politics. In the second book, he is trying to find and rescue some kidnapped friends. And then in the third book, he is trying to find pieces of an alien artifact, which um, if somebody else finds and assembles them, or if they're just left unfound, they are going to eventually destroy the world and the solar system and maybe more than that. I originally got drawn into the first book because it just wasn't what I was expecting. I checked it out from the library basically on a whim because I do enjoy sort of space opera and light science fiction and that kind of story on occasion, but I didn't expect that it would necessarily be up my alley. And then the plot actually went on some really interesting twists that I was just totally not expecting. And it was just sort of, it's not that to be honest, it's not that it was an amazing book, but it was just a lot better than I expected and really drew me in. I found myself a lot more invested and engaged by it than I expected. So from there, I was a lot more interested in this series. Book two, which was probably my favorite, was probably the most tightly plotted in my opinion in terms of following a, a single thread and having the most immediate stakes and the most emotional impact, but it was maybe a little less twisty than the other books. And book three is kind of a combination of those two. It didn't take as many abrupt twists as the first one did, where I just felt like, wow, that was really not where I thought this was going at all. But it did have more. And I think because of that, I think my husband really enjoyed book three. He also, he read my advanced copy after I was done with it. But for me, book two, which was probably in some ways the most psychological and personal, was kind of my favorite. Fergus is a character that I really enjoyed spending time with. He's not gonna go down in history as one of my all-time favorite series characters, but he's likable, he is generally a good person, and he's a character who basically he gets in a lot of trouble and then solves problems by managing to get out of it somehow rather than being hyper competent. It sort of becomes a joke as the series goes along that he's just a trouble magnet. So in the third book, which I'll talk about a little bit more because that's, you know, ostensibly why I'm doing this video. At the beginning of the third book, he gets asked to go out and find some lost sheep and he ends up finding a piece of this ancient alien artifact that's gonna destroy everything. So that's just kind of what he's like. Trouble just kind of finds him. In some ways, he's kind of a typical gruff, hard-boiled character with a heart of gold, but I found him to be very likable and sympathetic. This is a series that I felt like could have been turned into something that went on for like 10 books if the author wanted to take it in that direction. I think in the end, it seems like she really wanted to write a trilogy and it does work very well as a trilogy. I don't feel having read all three that it needs more books, but just the style 
I think I mentioned this before, the style of the trilogy, it feels like it's more episodic than telling one complete story, although there are a lot of things that get brought back into the last book. So yeah, part of me would have enjoyed just seeing, you know, 10 adventures with Fergus. That would have been fun. I think the stories are pretty action focused overall. One thing that I actually didn't notice until I finished reading the entire series is there is zero romance of any kind in this series. I think there's maybe one alluded to backstory kind of thing. And there are obviously characters that have been married or something like that. But beyond that, just romance is not a thing in this series. And you know, it goes to show what my interests as a reader are like that I legitimately didn't notice. I didn't notice that there wasn't a love interest or that there was no romance. But you know, if romance was really important to you, probably this series wouldn't be for you. For me, apparently, I am totally fine reading an entire series where the character really has no romantic interest towards anyone. Okay, now I'll talk a little bit about The Scavenger Door book three in particular. So the third book in a trilogy or the last book in a series, it's always a little bit tough because I feel like my expectations are a little bit higher. It doesn't just have to be as good as the first two, it has to be better. It has to make the whole thing into a, a satisfying conclusion. And I feel like this book did bring the trilogy to a satisfying end, but I didn't like it more than books one and two, which means in some ways I feel like I kind of ended up liking it less, which is very unfair. But that's just kind of how I feel about trilogies. I do still feel positive about it. I did enjoy reading it. I would still recommend the series if it seems like it's something that you would enjoy, if it's the kind of genre that you enjoy. But I wasn't in love with book three and I, I didn't feel as delighted and surprised by it maybe as the first two. Without really giving too many spoilers, Fergus is finally back on Earth for the first time in 20 or 30 years. He ran away as a 15 year old. He's trying to reconnect with the family that he has left, but he's kind of struggling to acclimate to this more normal life. Even though he's just visiting short term, he just feels, I think, very alienated from the kind of life that he left behind as a teenager and he doesn't really know how to form those connections. And he's had, because he's had such a, a violent, exciting life, he doesn't really know how to be a normal person very well. Then as I mentioned earlier, he gets asked to go find some lost sheep for a local farmer. And while he's out there, he ends up finding a piece of this alien artifact that is going to destroy everything eventually. And also there are a bunch of other competing groups that are after it. So that adds a lot of layers of excitement. That's basically the MacGuffin of the book. He needs to find all the pieces of this thing. And also he needs to avoid and deal with all the other people that want it first. One of my favorite things about this book as a conclusion is just that it brings back a lot of different elements that were either mentioned or used in the previous two books, it makes the trilogy feel a lot more like a cohesive whole than I realized it was going to be. And I like the way that Suzanne Palmer used those elements that she brought back. It didn't feel like just cameos are thrown in. It felt like you really got to see the effects of, you know, the impact that Fergus had as he went throughout his adventures and the people that he met, the relationships that he formed. It all, it did feel coherent and kind of like a cohesive finish. Even though I said that I thought book two was the most emotional and psychological in tone, and that's partly because of the setting, I feel like book three focuses the most on Fergus's emotional arc and sort of where he needs to get to in his life by the end of this series. But that being said, it was mostly an action story about him needing to find the different pieces of this alien artifact. And I did get a little bit sick of him hunting for this thing, but Palmer managed to really vary it. There's a lot of different adventures, different mini episodes within this story. So it was a lot of fun. Some of my favorite elements from this book that are not spoilers that I think I can mention, there's an AI ship with a really great personality that I really enjoyed. There's an alien character that looks like a fuzzy green spider that has a really great personality. I really enjoyed them as a character. And in general, there's a lot of one-off side characters that show up at a particular part who are just really amusingly written. It's, it's a lot of fun. Also, one of the groups that's trying to find this artifact is basically a doomsday cult led by this, I guess, very hypocritical, TV, religious figure, fake messiah type leader, and just the whole storyline with the doomsday cult is pretty entertaining. 
I think I already said that I felt like the MacGuffin of the artifact and just trying to find the pieces of it, it felt a little too contrived. Sometimes I got a little bit sick of it sometimes. Sometimes I actually felt like the stakes of this book were a little bit too high. Like we went from something more personal to the world's gonna end. And that's, that's kind of a lot. Like sometimes when that's the stakes, you don't even take it very seriously as a reader. But other than that, I did really enjoy how this one wrapped up. I didn't find it to be my favorite in the series. I still think number two was maybe my favorite, but my husband, I think he actually enjoyed this one the most and he found the first book a little bit too hard to get into. He did eventually, but it took him a second try and I really nagged him about it. So I think that just goes to show that two people who enjoyed the series had kind of a different reaction to the different books and the pacing and how we felt about it, but we did both have a good time with this series in the end. I don't think this is a series that's going to end up in my top 10 favorite series of all time, and I don't mean to give a lukewarm endorsement, I just feel like it's one of those things where I feel like it's really good for what it is. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, you really should check it out because I feel like it's underrated, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be to everyone's taste. I think hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea whether this is something that you would enjoy. Generally, if you like science fiction, action, adventure, you don't really like romance, I think you'd really enjoy this series. So thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you wanna see more reviews and other videos from me, and I hope you found this helpful.